Having wrapped up the Ravenhurst affair, the Master Detective gets sent to Huxley's boarding house by the Queen to investigate the disappearance of George Pritchard. Upon arriving, they are told by Harold, the landlord, about the myriad of rules that those who are staying must follow, including a very strict schedule. It soon becomes clear that some sort of entity, be it a ghost or some other supernatural creature, is responsible for all the disappearances happening at Huxley's. The Master Detective must explore this house and its tragic history in an attempt to find George and stop this entity once and for all. I keep trying to write these reviews in the same manner with the positives and the negatives because I felt like I needed to be consistent. However, that was really hindering my ability to write, so this particular video is going to be a little different. Overall, I do enjoy this game for the most part. I remember when I first played this game, I didn't enjoy it as much, and I found it difficult to put into words why. However, upon reflecting on it, now I can. Put simply, like the previous installments, this game doesn't really explain things properly, especially when it comes to their villain. There are some pretty heavy spoilers ahead, so if you don't want to be spoiled, then I would advise not watching this entire video. A quick recap of my thoughts before I get into the spoilers for those of you who are curious but don't wish to be spoiled. Again, I do, for the most part, enjoy this game, but the lack of explanation does make things annoying, and it does leave me wishing for more. So ultimately, I am giving this game a 6 out of 10. The main villain of this game is a woman named Meredith, who has actually been around for centuries. How is she still around? That's an excellent question. Her husband did something to her to make her live forever, and the game kind of explains why. You find a blueprint of sorts of a mechanical heart at some point in the game. This is presumably what's keeping her alive, and also presumably why the shockwave that goes out every hour knocks her out. How the heart keeps her alive without aging her, on the other hand, is never explained, nor why the shockwave goes out every hour in the first place. Her dad is also still alive, and this never gets explained. How is he still alive? Did he get the same procedure that Meredith did? And if so, why does it impact him the same way that it impacts Meredith? No explanation. The reason why this lack of explanation is a bad thing is that this game very clearly wants us to sympathize with this villain who has killed multiple people. At the end of the game, when you're somehow successful in killing her, truth be told, I'm not 100% sure how that was possible, uh, but she looks up at you and says, thank you, as if you are somehow releasing her from suffering. And while there are definitely some hints at the suffering that she is going through, it's never explained well enough to warrant this ending. We know her kids got taken in the middle of the night by their dad, her husband who made her immortal, for some reason. Why? It's kind of implied that it was for the sole purpose of hurting her. Why was this necessary? Did, did taking her children cause her madness, or was it the immortality process? Never explained. We know her husband has died, and throughout the game it specifically says that he killed himself. Did he because of all the terrible things that he did, or did Meredith kill him because of everything? Never explained. Why did the immortality process turn Meredith into such a stickler for the rules that she kills anybody who doesn't follow them? Never explained. For a villain who is supposedly supposed to be sympathetic, we just don't know enough about her life. So it makes the ending feel empty, because I just didn't feel anything for this character. Or at least I felt some things, but it was such mixed with the confusion of not understanding that it, what was going on, that it kind of cancelled out anything that I was feeling. When I was looking up some basic information to make sure that I have all my info correct, I actually found out that Broken Hour refers to her condition, something that is never actually stated in the game. I also discovered that some of this information, namely what her husband did to her and her dad and how her husband died, is explained in bonus content that I don't think is available in this game. Or at least not this specific version of the game, I think you have to buy the collector's edition, which is more expensive. Look, people who make this game, there are definitely things that you can feel free to keep a mystery, to be released in what is essentially a DLC. The main things needed to make your villain a sympathetic character, if that's clearly what you're going for, is not one of them. So yeah, I gave my basic rundown earlier, but this lack of explanation really hinders my ability to fully enjoy this game. So once again, I am giving it a 6 out of 10. And with that being said, to my friends and fellow Bedsies, I will see all of you 